days back, a bombshell report from Variety came out, essentially outlining all sorts of trouble at Marvel. All sorts of things kind of going on behind the scenes. And some of them maybe came off a little bit petty, but in general, I think a lot of us loved the MCU for a long time and feel like it is utterly missing something as of recently. Not that there aren't still projects that we would enjoy, but the MCU as a whole doesn't have that cohesiveness and consistency that we once felt we trusted the MCU to deliver. So this article comes out, and I think for a lot of people it was like, oh, this is what's going on. This is putting words to what I've been feeling. And a lot of what's in this article, generally speaking, I've talked about in some form or fashion multiple times over the last nine months or year or so. Other people have talked about it. It wasn't all that much new information in there, but it was variety. Mainstream outlet tend to not be the ones that go after <laughs> Disney. They even were like, there's some problems here. You have to acknowledge it. And here's a bunch of stuff going on with Marvel. So I'm going to I'm going to cover this in several different chunks. But um, I mean, it talks about MCU in general, Kang, Blade, the Marvels, VFX. It's all in there. So I'll try and do this kind of breaking it into individual pieces. And so in my mind, a big part of the problem with the MCU as of recently is that there's so much stuff going on that the secret sauce, Kevin Feige, can't really do his thing. That he his whole ability is that he was being able to be this hands-on producer that is in the scripting process, he's on set, he's in post-production, and he can work his magic to make things, make the final product be right and think big picture. However, there's only one of him. And at some point in time, you go beyond what Kevin Feige is able to do. The article kind of talks about this. There's a section in it that says, but Marvel has never been in the business of being average. Kevin's real superpower, his genius has always been in post-production, getting his hands on the movies and making sure they finished strongly. These days, he's spread thin. So there was a point in time where they, he'd be able to go into the room, uh, the editing room, see what they have, and see what's missing, and see what pieces you can add to connect it to the next movie coming out to build that excitement. But if he's spread thin at the starting process, the scripting process, so he's not working his magic, choosing things as well there, and he can't coach the new people as well as he used to so that things go as smoothly, and our scripts aren't as polished before we go into production, so there's more issues in post-production, and we have twice as many things going on because we added Disney Plus into the mix. There's way more that he has to do in post because there's more issues. There's also twice as many things. So that polish that he used to be able to put on everything, it doesn't work like it did before because there's only one of him. And part of the problem, I think what is frustrating to so many of us is that Marvel stood for quality for a long time. They had their misses, but they were all watchable misses. Like, if Thor The Dark World is your worst movie, it's mediocre, but movies get way worse than Thor The Dark World. And it, and that one was, like, so obviously the worst for a long time. Maybe that and Iron Man 2. But it feels like more recently, things are just these gigantic misfires. And there's another section in this article where they actually have some quotes from the author of this book right here, where it says, these uh, are signs that the flood of product is leading people to tune out. There's too much product because of Disney Plus, too many movies, so people are tuning out. I have that conversation every single day. I just got off a video chat for a Patreon video chat with someone. That was the conversation that I can't keep up with all the TV shows. I have that conversation all the time. It's way too much. It's just too much. YouTubers in my state base that watch movies and TV for a living can't keep up. 
Continues on. I'm not prepared to call it a permanent fail, but people, uh, but based on the numbers that go with Marvel podcasts, Marvel based articles, friends who do Marvel based video coverage, and all the numbers are significantly down. So is Joanna Robinson, co author of the New York Times bestseller, MCU, The Reign of Marvel Studios. So she says that, hey, if you just even look at the view numbers for coverage of Marvel stuff, they're way down. I can tell you that's true. There's still solid hitters. I'm sure my Marvel coverage this next week is going to do great. But compared to where it was at before, way down. In particular, week to week coverage of Disney Plus shows in 2021 was just teeing off. This year, what the hell happened? Just, just no one clicks. <laughs> there's, there's, there's just not the interest. Everybody was tuning in for Loki and they wanted to go on the Internet to see everyone's week to week in-depth coverage. And those numbers have dramatically dwindled. Continues on. The quality is suffering in 2019 at the peak. If you put Marvel Studios in front of something, people were like, oh, that brand means quality. The association is no longer the case because there have been so many projects that have felt half-baked and undercooked. Once again, that's coming from the person that literally wrote the book on the MCU. It's like, this, it meant one thing up till Endgame, and I guess even Spider-Man Far From Home right afterwards, and it means something very different now. It's not that they don't have things that are still good. Loki, season two right now, people are liking it. People actually really dug the Echo trailer. We were all cynical about Echo and we saw the trailer and went, you might've won me over. Echo, I'm excited for that now. Guardians three, people really dug it. But people are holding out to only see the good ones because they're not all the good ones. <laughs> like you assumed they were gonna be good and sometimes you were surprised that they weren't good up until phase four when it started to be like, there's so much stuff and a lot of this is a waste of my time. I need to be convinced to watch this specific one. That was the shift that they had. They, like there was this upfront. I got to check it out. I have to see this with Marvel up until recently. And that's just floundered. It's disappeared. It isn't must see anymore. It's I got to hear that this is good before I decide to go see it. And you saw that in the opening numbers for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which were way down from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2's numbers. And when people heard it was good, it then had great legs and ended up being a very solid performer. But you could already see that dip because Quantum Mania made people go, Ugh, this stuff, really? I'm going to hold off a little bit. I need to hear that it's good before I spend my money to go to the theater to go watch this thing. Most of these clips are pulled from my Patreon live streams. I do about six live streams every single month for $2 per month, $20 per year. You can get access to all the exclusive videos and live streams for $5 per month. You get your name on my end card. At the top tier, you get a 30 minute video chat with me each month. The link down below in the description has more information.